Uh, please go to our course compare the website inside your seed virtual machine. Okay, today's lab, lab 06. Data integrity. We will practice uh, check digit in task one. Or check, check parrot in task one, check digit in task two. And uh, hash code in task three, the cryptographic hash code in task three. So these are the tasks we are going to complete today. Here for task one, in the system, suppose we have a file data blocks labeled as D1, D2, D3, D4, and a DP. The P is the parity block or stored on a read file storage system consisting of file disks. And it's known that D1 equals this uh, binary string, D2, D4, DP. And suppose all D3 is corrupted. So show your process to recover D3. Here, the block size is just for illustration. We just use a some more binary number. And on real system, the block size may be a four kilobytes or eight kilobytes, or just one sector. The typical sector size is a five hundred twelve bytes. On Monday, we learn uh, in read file any uh, one disk is corrupted, it can be recovered from other disks, including the parity disk, right? How do we get D3? D3 will equals D1, big XR, D2, and big XR, D3, and big XR, DP. So that's the process we, we can get. All right, now how do we do the bit XR? We can do it manually or use a calculator. And I suggest you do it manually. Here, how do we do it? You can put inside your word processor. For example, I use a Libro Office uh, Rider. So my machine uh, is a little bit uh, slow. So open uh, my writer, for example, maybe you use your Microsoft Word processor. Here I would like to create a table with all the bits put inside. How many bits do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, I have 16 uh, bits. So the table size, I would like to create a 
the table width column totally we have a we have five disks, right? And with the one title, then we need a six, uh, we need a six rows and how many columns? We have 60 bin, uh, 16 bits. And uh, with this uh, block number, then we need a uh, 17 columns. So we have a heading. Insert here, then this side we can consider it as a disk strap, right? So we have this D1, D2, D3, and so on. Now these bits, bits go from lowest bit to highest bit. Usually we write it like this, right? B0, B1 until B15. So you can feel other cells by yourself. Then I need to uh, type all the bits inside this D1, D2, D4, and DP. So D1, D2, D3 is missing. We are required to recover D3. So we type D4 here and uh, DP here, then D3 here. You need to type the bits inside. I will only show you uh, the last three bits, other bits you can complete by yourself. For example, for D1, the three bits is, uh, the last three bits or the right side three bits is uh, 111, right? For D2 is uh, it's 0, 1, 0. And for D4, before the last uh, three bits is uh, zero, zero, zero. And for DP is zero, zero, one. So how do you do the bit XR? Bit XR means if they are the same, you get a one. If they are different, you get a zero. So you can do them pair by pair. One and zero, they are different, so you get a one. That one, bit x or with this zero, they are different, so you get a, a one again. And that one, you bit x or with this one, they're the same, so you get a zero. So this place, you get a zero, right? Or you can do another way. You can uh, add this uh, number together, then mod two. Here you add this number together, you get a two. Two mod two, you remain the zero, right? So here the same. One plus one, you get two. Two, you mod uh, two, you get zero. Here, the summation is one. One, you mod two, you get one. So this is uh, how you get uh, recover this D3. So you need to fill up all other bits. So this is uh, task one. How do we complete task one? Now for task two. Task two, for special messages such as a uh, bank uh, account number, ISBN 13, EAN 13, et cetera, each of them contains a check digit for add action. We know the check digit is at the right side. The rightmost uh, digit is the check digit here. What, what find the validity of the following special code or messages, we have three. UPCA, ISBN 13, EAN 13, show your calculation. Uh, how do we do this? We need to uh, know that a uh, formula to verify these uh, bits, right? So we can go to uh, Wikipedia to find the UPCA or you can go from our lecture links. I would like to use a Google to search it. Your PC dash A Wikipedia. So 
So you come here, this is uh, UFC code or universal product code. You scroll down to find uh, that uh, UPC dash A. Here is a formula. How do you check the digital, uh, check the validity, validity of your UPC dash A? Here are the digits come from left to right, X1, X2, until X12. Totally, we have 12 numbers, right? So you need to draw a table. If you want to draw a table, how do you draw that table? Here, this is UPC. Uh, UPC dash A is 12 bits together with the check, check digit. So totally we need, we need a 13 columns and uh, three rows. We need a 13 columns and uh, three rows. One row contains the title, another row contains the digit, the third row contains this uh, weight. So we need four rows. The fourth row to contain the final result. I think I'm gonna four rows. Okay, four rows is good. If you need more, we can add later. So here, we know these are the digits. So you can type X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, X6, X7, X8, X9, X10 and uh, X11. Then your final check digit X12. So you can, uh, as a, please uh, format your digits like this X12. Okay, now I put the digits inside, right? X1 to X12. And uh, the weight. I want to put it here. So here you can consider, let's uh, say, a digit. Here is a weight. Here is a sum. It's not the sum, the product. The product of that weight and the digit. So in our UPC dash A code, here it's uh, the digit is 7252521213. Then one, four, zero, seven, nine. And the last digit, check digit is a three. So to highlight this is a check digit, you may uh, add some color. Now the weight, the weight here is three one, three one, three one, right? Until the, the check digit, three, one, three, one. I would like to make it a quick point of C, control V, control V. Okay, now you multiply them together, you get the product three times one, three here, 27, here, seven here, zero, here is a four, three, four. time them together, multiply them together, right? Three, two, fifteen. Two times one is two. 
three times seven, 21. Now you get this uh, product. You make a summation of all these uh, product to, to add them together. What will we get? You can say the sum equals you plus all these number together. You can do it uh, on your C, then open your calculator. I would like to use that uh, spreadsheet. Paste all the number here. Then I take a summation. Get 90, right? The result is 90. So you can uh, fill the summation equals uh, 90. You need to, uh, or you add one column here. Okay, you insert a column right. So here you just say the sum, the final sum. Final sum here is uh, 90. Now, to show it's uh, valid, you only need to show that uh, total sum, 90 mod, you write like this, mod 10. It equals zero, right? This one equals zero. So this is your PC dash A is valid. So this process, how do you verify uh, your PC dash A code is valid or not? All right, now for the second one. The second one is uh, ISP, ISBN 13. So ISBN 13, you need to find the uh, that formula for ISBN setting. You see that's E, you see that EAN setting is here. So you can open it at that place. This is a EAN setting. You check how do you find the calculation here, position and weight. For this uh, EAN 13 code, the position, you can uh, draw the position like this, one, two, three, and uh, this is 18. We use a uh, EAN 13, right? EAN 13, so you write the position here, the weight here, then multiply the weight with the corresponding bit, get the sum, and that sum model with model what number, you need to find uh, the modular, what the modular number. The modular number, we need to find that uh, formula here. Must be added to this checksum to get a number divided for by 10, which means that the modular is 10. So your modular 10 must be equal to zero to be valid, otherwise, it's not valid. So this is how do you uh, do this uh, task? ISBN 13, or oh, this is EAN 13. For ISBN 13, so we need to find that ISBN 13. We just complete this uh, EAN 13. So now we need to find that uh, ISBN 13. You can Google it, find quickly here. We need to go back to this. Uh, List here you see ISB BN setting check digit. So this is an ISBN setting. You need to use this uh, formula. You use this formula to verify the given code is valid or not. To verify this uh, ISBN setting is valid or not. So this is a uh, task two. And you are suggested to need to draw a table like this.
to make that as clear as possible. Okay, now for task three. Task three, we have three sub tasks. Sub task one, here create an empty file and a file with exactly one blank space. Then find the, the following hash codes for these two files. Create a table to compare the below hash code between the two files. So what the table would look like, we need a headline and all these hash codes. Totally we have six type of hash codes. So in your report, you would need to create a table with how many rows. We need seven rows, right? Seven rows and uh, how many columns? We will need uh, three columns. So here you can put uh, the, the hash. Here is the empty file. Here is the file with the file with exactly one or only one. blank space. Then you need to find all the hash code. Here you put the hash code on this uh, left side. MD file, SHA1, SHA22, to the four and show two fifty six, show three eight four, and show five one two. So these are the hash codes. We need to find them and put them inside this table. Copy your result and paste here. It looks like uh, you can adjust the, the width of these cells to make them more readable. Okay, here it is. I demonstrated a uh, empty file, SHA-224 and 256, some of them on Monday. So today I only demonstrate a short one. We have two ways. One way you can use the built-in program inside a seed. The other way you use an open SSL. Either way is okay. So how do we create an empty file and a file with only one blank space? Empty file means its length is zero, right? And uh, the file with only one blank space. So its length is uh, is one, it means it's just a one byte. So I can go to a, create a folder, this is a lab 06. Oops, I would like to make them consistent. And how do we create an empty file? You can just a new empty document, quite empty. And this file you see its length is zero byte, right? Here, in the right corner, empty selected zero byte. So this is an empty file. Then we create another file with only one blank space. We create a one space. And this one space, you will need to add only one empty space. You can use a sublime text editor. And uh, be careful and uh, just press once for your empty space. Then Ctrl S, save it. And close it. We need to verify here. You see that it's only one byte, right? 
and it contains only one M space. So these are the two files. Next, we open a terminal window. You can use a, I will demonstrate uh, two ways to you. One way we can use the built-in, built-in program, show one sum that are empty. So you get this uh, hash code. This is the show one hash code. You copy it and paste here for the show one. And uh, for the file with only one blank space, you can use uh, this uh, show one sum, one space. So you get this result, right? And also you can use open SSL digest dash show one and uh, followed by the file name dash in one space. Oops, I made a mistake here. Show one, use the show one message digest uh, algorithm. And uh, we don't need a dash in, we just follow that file name. That's good. So this is a way how do we find it. Here you see this uh, the hash code generated with the open SSL. It should be the same as we use the built-in program, right? You see they are exactly the same. B8, B8 file, C6, C6. So you use any way is uh, okay. Then you copy it and paste here. For others, here, for example, 224, SHA 224, 256, 384, and file 12, you just need to change. Use OpenSL, you just change this one to this dash SHA 224, 256, and so on. If you want to use the built in program, for that MD file is here, right? If you want to use the built in, you type SHA. Press your tab key, you will get all this stuff. Show one sum, show two file six sum, and uh, so on. So this is a uh, subtask one here. Now for subtask two, subtask two, you can again, we have six hash code. You are asked to demonstrate the avalanche property of the cryptographic hash functions listed here. How do we demonstrate? You download a JPEG image from the internet. Let's name it uh, orange.jpg. Then use the hex added blast to modify only one bit. Pay attention, only one bit in the image file to get a new file named as uh, modified or modified.jpg. Then you create a table similar to subtask one to compare the hash code between the original file and the modified file to see the avalanche property. Okay, now let's uh, download an image. So we can download uh, any image. Here I would like to download, uh, let's say, uh, Spaceship, SpaceX, Dragon Ship. Designed by SpaceX. Here is the uh, SpaceX uh, Dragon. So we choose one image. And save the image as. Lab 06. And quite uh, orange.
Okay, now you can come back to your folder here. We have orange.jpg here. And uh, we use uh, the hex editor. Hex editor, you can type class from, from there. Oops, my, my machine is quite slow. Class. Class hex editor. And I hex added uh, I open that uh, image, the image inside my documents. Uh, 06, orange. So you need to uh, pay attention. When we only need to change one bit, right? Change one bit, I can change this uh, zero to one. Here, before you change it, uh, sometimes when you have the number, it will just uh, insert that number to make sure you didn't insert a number. You can see the size. Here the size, let's type a ls. ls dash ls. The size of my origin is this size. So make sure your modified JPEG has the same size. So you need to pay attention when you modify one number. Here I change that zero to one. It will only uh, modify the uh, one bit. Then I save it here, file, save as, modified, or modified.jpg, modified.jpg. Okay, now I have two images, right? You need to check it uh, again. Here you see this modified.jpg, they have the same size. It has the same size as the orange.jpg. Uh, that's it. We have two files. And you can also use uh, within diff to modify their different modify origin.jpg. You see that these are, they differ only one byte, only one bit here. Tap to quit. Okay, now. You can use the same way as we apply those hash code on that empty file and one space file. You apply them on this modify.jpg and origin.jpg. For example, I apply empty file sum on that modify. Actually, you can use this way, star.jpg. Then you see they are dramatically different, right? So you need to, again, you need to create a table, create a table. Looks like this one. Here is your original JPEG, here is your modified JPEG and put all the hash code here. And uh, draw a conclusion. Your conclusion is the avalanche property, even these two files differ only one bit, but the hash code differ dramatically here. Only a few digits are the same. Here you can see this one is the same. Two is the same, nine is the same, B is the same. Very few digits, they are the same. So this is uh, this is subtask two, this one. Demonstrate the avalanche property. Now subtask three. Subtask three. Download this file from the official website, then check the integrity by this SHA-256 and SHA-1. We know hash code can be used to use it as the digital signature of a program or a file. Here is a, you can see the application in the real world used by this GPG-4 bin. You open it. Go to its official website. There is a GPG uh, for me. You need to pay attention. The version number is 
not this one. So how could you find the old version? Point three point one point four. So we need to surf through this website to see where you can find the old version. Usually they are inside the download port. Then you should click download. You can also see this, there is a check integrity. How do you check integrity? Right? When you check integrity, you, you can use those uh, here. You can find the, the hash code. But we are required to find that uh, an old version. This technology, the, the software evolves quite fast. And when you design a website, publish your software, you can use these similar techniques, post your integrity of your software. Here, you see, you can post your checksum for your software. One real, another real world example, for example, uh, when you download apps from Apple Store or Google Play, how do they check the integrity of those uh, apps. Actually, they are built in the Google, Google Play client application. They will need digital uh, signature. And we will learn later in this course, how do you uh, create your digit, uh, digital signature? For example, sign your program with your privacy. Since your public key is uh, open to everyone, then they can use your public key to verify this program is signed with your digit, uh, with your private key. So they'll know the program is from you, not from somebody else. And we will learn this uh, digital signature verification in the following weeks. Today we, we learn how to verify the checksum, right? Okay, we, we need to find that program. Go to that uh, download. Yeah, I think I open it up. No, here. Yeah. Download. And it uh, just show me a uh, download this uh, version. How could we find uh, some other versions? We need to go to its uh, website to find a of the state here. Go to its uh, website to see where we can find that uh, other version. Archived uh, news. Here is uh, the archived news. We want to find a uh, change history. This change history is just uh, a log of the modification, but uh, we didn't see. We do find the version here, right? Three point one point four. But where could we find that uh, download file here? explicit download of this version is here, but uh, what's the checksum? What is the checksum for this one? Check this detailed read me to see whether we can find it. So inside this detailed read me, we do have checksum here, right? And let's see. These are the checksum of the component GPG for win. Here, 2.20, we want to find this one. 
GPG 4 win dash 3.1.4. Why we need an old version? Because sometimes uh, mainly you want to reproduce the same lab effect to your trainees or students. Then you need some uh, version you prepared. It's inside my download folder, it's okay. You can search this file name. From here, Ctrl F. Ctrl V, page here it didn't find, which means it's a checksum is not listed in this uh, readme. So another quick way we just has use Google to search it in a little bit more uh, quick than we go through in, in the official website. Three point one three. I want to find the old version of this three point one three. All downloads here we can go from this all downloads to see whether we we can find uh, the place to download all here all the packages files to G for bin. Now we can find all the programs. GPG 4 win 3.1.4, right? It's here. And we have a signature here, but we didn't see uh, the checksum. Let's open the signature. Total, we have only uh, four files here, right? We didn't find the checksum here. Let's uh, have a look whether we can find the checksum. Now you see with a good file name, it can facilitate the users to find the needed information. Here, based on this file name, we don't know which one is a checksum for that one. Where this one contains all the checksum. No, this is this is about to create the checksum, make a checksum. The author, the program author, used that uh, script to create the checksum for all the files. Now let's uh, go to the folder I downloaded this file. Open a new tab. I download this one here and the signature here. Control X, paste here. Now this signature we will learn in the following uh, weeks to learn how to verify. It's uh, whether the signature or not. But we didn't find that uh, checksum. So it uh, still looks like uh, Google is uh, quicker to find it. Okay, program file name. Control A, Control C. I paste here to say shar to file six sum. You don't want to show this one. 
the history, but it didn't tell me the Here we see something here. Can you, do we have a shower here? Okay, we have a shower here. Now we go to that. Uh, we have only a shower 256. We don't have empty file here. What's the version of our program? 3.1.4. Okay, point four. For point four, we don't have that uh, checksum, right? Yeah, we didn't, didn't see uh, that checksum. And we only see the checksum is provided for later versions. Okay, since we cannot find the official checksum, so let's uh, change this one. Just uh, verify the latest version, the checksum of this latest version. And it provides only a short 256. There is no uh, MD file. Your MD file is uh, not suggested to use. But last uh, time when we do this lab, both uh, MD5 and SHA-256 are provided here for this one. So we will uh, revise this one. So you will suggest only use this uh, latest one. We go to this place to download this one. This is the latest one, right? 3.1.4. Okay, this one. So save this one and save this uh, SHA-256. And delete the old one. This is the latest version currently. I paste here. Now, how do you verify the integrity? You only need to calculate the SHA-256 of this AXE file, then compare with this one provided by the author. So you can, inside this uh, terminal window, you cat that gpg for win.ex.sha256. So this is a code, SHA 256 hash code. You need to uh, calculate SHA 256 sum followed by that gpg for win.exe. You see you have the same code, which means this file downloaded to your computer is not corrupted during the transmission. So it's a sound, it's good, it's integrity is assured. 